Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Las Vegas Regional. Checking in with 687 Nerd Herd coming out of California. This team already, phenomenal start to their season so far. Had a double silver clean bling just a little bit ago, so that means getting uh, EI. So uh, congratulations, qualifying for World Championships. But Nerd Herd here, we're going to be talking about a lot of cool changes that they have going on with their robot. As we go through on this, uh, new intake we'll be talking about, switching from over the bumper to under the bumper is really cool. But we'll be following that full note journey, talking about what they're doing for different sensors and a lot of other great things going on this robot. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Janet, we got to start talking about changes from the LA region. You have such a great performance already, but great teams continue to uh, implement iterations on it. You made a big change on it. Just talk to me about uh, what you changed and we're going to be diving more into it. Yeah, so we changed our um, intake from over bumper to under bumper. During LAR, we noticed that we had to change out our intake plates almost every single match. So that's why during that about two week span, we changed to an under bumper intake. So um, our under bumper intake is really reliable and it's been really consistent thus far. And um, Ezra can talk more about that. Yeah, so uh, coming out of the Ventura County Regional, we realized that we needed to switch to under bumper intake as over bumper intake wasn't as good. But we had LAR coming up and we had to walk fast. So what we decided was the best course of action would be for us to uh, to use plates instead of bars to support the under bumper intake. You can see on the sides, on the left and right, we have two big plates that's a, that are uh, half inch uh, in thickness and support uh, the entire under bumper system. Uh, these two plates are uh, controlled by two different rollers. These rollers are, or two, motors, sorry. Uh, these two motors, uh, one of them controls the top set of uh, uh, rollers that guide the note into um, into the, the indexer and the bottom set, uh, the other motor supports the bottom set, which brings the, uh, which makes sure the note doesn't fall into the, the drive base and also helps guide the note into the indexer. When you were making those changes from uh, going over the bumper, under the bumper, did you have to make a lot of changes to your frame itself? Yeah, uh, actually, no. Our, our drive frame stays the, sa sure. stayed the same. We extended, oh, we extended the, the drive rail that supports the, the swerve module stays the same. But we extended the drive frame out an additional four, four inches outward in order, in order to have enough room to, bring, to have a bar that supports the bumpers and have enough room for the rollers that bring the note into the indexer. And your handoff is a really smooth process for us. Talk to me more about what it is, and if we can see a note come in to uh, demonstrate that, I think it'd be really cool, because this is a really nice mechanism you have here. Yeah, sure. I mentioned earlier how time was a really uh, critical issue when we were working on passing off, so we wanted to make sure that the handoff between the uh, between the intake and the indexer was going to be as similar as possible to what it was for the over bumper intake. So we did some calculations and some Crayola sketches on CAD, and we were able to f uh, find a certain um, certain uh, angle of the rollers in order to get the uh, the note in the correct orientation as it was earlier. Very cool. Can we see a note come in and demonstrate that? Sure. sure. Well, definitely hear your robot on the field for sure. Uh, it's such a quiet game. It's cool. Cool to see everything that's gone into this. One of the things as well, too, I want to ask about is that you have uh, don't quite have a climber ready, but you have a trap mechanism ready uh, for it as well. So talk to me about uh, what that is like. And then future plans for championships being qualified for that. Are we going to see your team trap uh, as you get into world championships? Yeah, so before our first competition, we had a trap prototype, a trap and climb prototype ready. But because of problems with our CG, we weren't able to implement the climb. Sure. But because we implemented for this uh, for this trap, we have a uh, on the underside of the indexer. We have two rollers there that could bend the note at 90 degrees. So if we are able to get our indexer into the trap area, we may be able to score. We have tested it, and we can score 90 degrees into trap. 
So with the new in, with the new under bumper intake, our CGs changed to a more favorable position, and we may we think that it would be easier for us to implement a climb in the future and get to the trap position. Well, looking forward to see that implementation as we get ready for World Championships as well too. Let's pass it back to Janet. It's going to talk more about your uh, shooter. Uh, talk to me more about the uh, configuration shooter. How did you come up with this exact design, and why was it such a great fit for 687? Yeah, so like as we said, our handoff angles between intake version 1 and version 2 are very similar. It goes really nicely into our shooter. So originally, we have an alpha and a beta or competition-ready robot. Our alpha robot had um, horizontal shooter wheels, but through looking into things like cranberry alarm and our own prototyping and data testing, we found that, that around a one-to-one -one ratio on vertical wheels would yield the fastest result. We also wanted to make sure that we did amp and um, speaker scoring so that's why we have our shooter on a pivot point so that it can do those really nicely and really simply. Um, I think also one unique thing about our shoot, um, shooter is that we make sure it's a combination of um, wheels and belly, belts and pulleys because we wanted to have as much surface area as possible when the note is traveling so that it doesn't get stuck in any of those areas. So. And can we see a note come in and see what an amp shot looks like again on that? So I really like the angle on that. It seems very stable as well, too, yeah. as it goes through. So I really like that a lot. Um, from your shooter wheel wise, uh, I noticed you got the four wheels on one side, three on the other. Are you getting a little bit of spin out of your shot then as you shoot it? Um, I, w I feel like, yeah, there's a little bit of spin, but it's really, really stable and consistent because we did a lot of work on the superstructure. So we've noticed at Ventura that it was really shaky whenever we would try to shoot. But if you, we added way more rivets down at the base and towards the angled part portion. So that's why we have a really stable and consistent shot. Yeah. Brian, let's talk about uh, more of the uh, software side of things, uh, both from your vision and also uh, some of the sensors that you're using to get some good localization on the field. Yeah, so uh, obviously in this game, vision is really huge. Uh, the further you get away from that speaker, uh, the smaller and smaller the target becomes. So we have our limelight mounted right here on the front of the robot. And so the way we adjust our shooter and our drive base based on the uh, location of the April tags is that we use a uh, a uh, pose generated from the April tag, we take that and we through, we run calculations in order to find the exact angle of the shooter as well as the angle of the drive face in order to make an accurate shot. Um, another thing that we do have is a bunch of feedback for the drivers. So one thing is we have a banner sensor or a beam brake sensor right located in here inside of our indexer. And so that lets us know the moment when a note is, enters our indexer. Uh, so we can stop our rollers as well as change the LED indicators right here to tell the drivers that we have a note inside and they're ready to come back to the other side of the field. Um, on our arm, we also have a pigeon mounted right here. So that's an IMU. So uh, we found issues, a lot of issues with uh, backlash this season with our absolute encoder, which was mounted on the output of our mechanism. So uh, instead of that, we opted for a pigeon, which is way more accurate and absolute in terms of the position that we get for our arm. So let's bring in Kyle to talk more about uh, what you're doing from an autonomous standpoint. Talk to me about, uh, I see you're utilizing path planners, so let's run through some of your different autonomous modes. Uh, anything else you might want to cover on your robot too? Yeah, so the same concept of reliability really carried with us when we were creating our autonomous routines. So our main auto that we've been running for most of the competition is our four-piece auto. So this starts in front of the subwoofer and shoots a preload shot and also grabs the three notes in front of the subwoofer and then leaves. However, most teams doing this do it pretty fast. Everyone wants to run really fast at like five meters per second, just because Pathfinder lets you just change all the settings on the fly like that. However, we really wanted to be sure that our autonomous was really reliable and consistent. So because of that, we opted to go for a slower speed at three meters per second. And also we add checks after each note is intaked to make sure that the note is successfully put into the indexer and it's not just based on the path itself. So for example, when intaking the note, we make sure that the banner sensor fully detects that the note has entered the superstructure and is ready to shoot at the subwoofer. So these extra checks, even though they make our autonomous slightly slower, we believe that they help a lot with the reliability and just ensure that we're able to get those 22 points every single auto. Any future ambitions for championships that maybe crank that up another notch or two in regards to notes? Yeah, so definitely we're our next steps in autos are going to be trying to have a lar larger variety of autos. So the auto that we're currently working on right now is a is a side auto starting from the right side of the subwoofer on the blue lines. So we'll be we'll be preloading a note and trying to race as fast as possible to mid to grab the two center line notes and then to try to score them back in our own shooter. And so our vision calculations with that help a lot because they help with both the reliability of the drive face and also the reliability of the shooter. 
Well, Nerd Herd 687, first off, congratulations on the great season uh, so far, especially qualifying for World Championships through uh, EI and all the inspiration that your team does bring to the first community. This is a phenomenal robot, so thank you very much for giving us this walkthrough. I'm sure teams can learn a lot from it. Good luck here at the Las Vegas Regional, and we can't wait to see you at the World Championship as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.